it's hideous. Someone called the police. There's been a character murder. Or, well, there was, but they did a pretty good job of patching things up, actually. I went to see the movie just this weekend, and let me tell you, it's a surprisingly good watch. I braced myself for something I didn't think I was going to enjoy, and, well, I'm happy to tell you I was wrong to think that. While the story isn't exactly anything to win an Oscar over, the animation quality and the charm of the movie's nostalgic rhythm is something to enjoy all in itself. I really do recommend it. I'm not sponsored by Sega or anything, it's just it really is a surprisingly decent film. Make sure you watch all of today's video because, like I usually do, I dropped in some great tips as I was going and you're absolutely definitely going to learn something new today. Subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you want to learn to draw as fast as Sonic can run, which is allegedly around... 765 miles per hour? Wait, can you even measure learning speed in miles per hour? Probably not. Anyway, let's get started. So as always, we're going to start with the head, and to start with the head, we're going to draw a circle. So if it helps, you can draw around a coin or the bottom of a small cup or something, just to get that circular shape nice and actually circular, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of etch in that circular shape, and we'll start building the shapes around it. So what I like to do is build out a skeleton of the character first in pretty much every drawing. So right underneath that head, you want to draw basically a small, it's not going to be quite a circle, and it's not going to be quite a square. We've got this kind of dropped shoulder kind of shape on each side, so it comes down at an angle from each side just underneath the head, and then rounds out towards a bottom bit, and we get this kind of very unique pillow looking shape. And then out of that we can basically draw the limbs. So we'll draw a front leg as a line for now, just kind of going down to about here, and the nearer leg curving away and going down to about here. So try and get that curve in. See this one is more straight. And this one is kind of coming down at a very, very slight angle. And if you pull that off, you'll really get the pose just right. Now for the arms, we'll just draw in a quick shape here. And we can just draw a block at the end. And draw it lightly, because we're going to draw over that in just a moment. And then for this arm, we can draw a line that bends down and then up. And again, we can just kind of draw a block at the end. That's just to remind us that there's meant to be a hand there. And we'll tackle the hands one by one as we get there. But for now, we're just kind of etching out the shape of our character. And to help get the shape of the feet right, it's helpful if you just draw a small triangular, uh, triangular shape at the bottom of this one. It just kind of swoops down from here, ends at a tip, and then we curve it down towards the heel in this sort of shape here. This foot is a little bit different. This foot is actually facing us. So uh, this one's easiest to draw a part of the heel here, just kind of a line that curves down, just like that, very small. And then we'll draw the front of the shoe with a small lip like that before bringing it back up to about the ankle. The ankle's going to be roughly here and here on both of these. So if you want, you can leave a line in there just to remind you where the ankle is. If at any point, by the way, I'm going too fast, don't worry. You can always pause the video or slow it down. Uh, I'm uh, used to drawing at a certain speed, so if it is too fast, you have full control of the video, so you should do that. Draw a line right down the front of the face as a kind of line of symmetry, and if you do this, this will help us get our proportions right for the face and getting it nice and symmetrical. And then it's helpful to draw another line that kind of follows it around and it creates this kind of illusion that this isn't just a circle anymore, this is a sphere. And this is a really good way of drawing faces generally. I will do a tutorial on how to draw faces uh, in the future. If you guys would like me to do one, I'm more than happy to do one. I think that could be quite useful. But for now, this is a quick crash course. A circle with a line that kind of bevels forward and another line that curves just kind of below that halfway point. So coming from this line, we can now start to draw our eyes. So this eye, I'm going to give it a bit of a kind of like an angry, well not angry, just kind of like a, a determined expression. And all I've done here is a small line that's come up, a line that curves up towards the back of the head, and another line that's just a bit taller than that first line over here that curves down towards the guideline that we drew. And then for the other eye, we're going to draw this one a little bit taller, and it comes out to the edge of the guideline here, and we can basically leave that one as is for now. Now with the eyes pretty much right where we want them, we can start drawing the rest of the facial features. So from this line here, this one I'm drawing a circle around, we can kind of guide this down into a flick that comes out of our guideline, right out of that safety zone, down a bit, and we can just kind of close this off, and that forms the nose straight away. So it kind of ends a little bit wider than it is where it begins. Just underneath this nose, we can bring a line that wraps down below our guideline, and then kind of joins it as we approach the neck. And this produces the sort of uh, muzzle shape that Sonic has. Then here we can draw the mouth. You can draw the mouth any way you want. You can give them kind of like a 
unsure expression if you want, a little bit of a wiggly line, give him a sad expression, something like that, just a small curve. I'm going to go for a little cheeky grin, because I feel like that's probably how Sonic looks his best. It's very, very Sonic in nature, that kind of smile. So we'll go for that, because it's a good match for the eyes. And now we can basically start etching in the outline of the face, because right now we all we have is a circle and a very basic facial structure. So we can go ahead and start kind of really making it look like Sonic now. So we can start from this line here that ended at this guideline. If we come out a bit here, just a tiny bit, form a small triangle on the edge of the face and bring it back to the guideline, we can then bounce off that and form a much bigger triangle for the far ear. And that's basically just going to stay like that. We don't have any uh, details to add to this one. So that's the ear basically done at this point. And this line here is his brow. That's his eyebrow. So that comes out because he's frowning a little bit. If he's not frowning, this would be higher up and it would be less pronounced. So now for the spikes, again, we can just start here where we left off. We can draw one big, large one for the, uh, the top middle spike. Bring it back around to the back of the head like that. Then a slightly smaller one, but feel free to pronounce it and make it go out fairly far and bring it to about here. And then a final third one can just sort of point a little bit downwards compared to the other two and bring it back. And to help build up those strokes, you might want to use um, lots of smaller strokes rather than big sweeping ones like that. Those are a bit harder to draw and a bit less forgiving if you make an error. Whereas these, you can just draw lots of small strokes like that and kind of build up the shape over time. Now for the near ear, we can uh, draw a triangle that comes up like this and it just kind of rests on the edge of that guideline there. And then a smaller triangle, a full triangle, just sitting inside of this for the inner ear. Now we're almost done with the face actually. What's good for now is to add some small strokes of fur here just to kind of show where the fur changes color. And you can see it's immediately looking a lot more like Sonic now. And now for the eyes, uh, the actual pupils sitting inside of the eyes. This isn't easy to get right because we want our character to be looking at the viewer. We can have him looking this way, we could have him looking that way, but I know you guys are up for a challenge, so we're going to have him looking directly at the viewer. So a great way to do this in cartoons, the near, uh, sorry, the far eye can be looking near us like this. this. It can be on the near side. So that's all the way over to the right, almost as if he's looking that way. But that's not what we're going to do this time, because this eye is going to detect, dictate which, version, uh, uh, which direction sorry, that he's looking in. So if I were to draw the pupil over here, then he's convincingly looking over in this direction, but that's that's not what we want today. To make him look directly at the viewer, we basically want to hide a little bit of the pupil either below or above the line of the eye and also have it smack bang in the middle. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to hide a little bit of the upper pupil underneath this brow to help pronounce just how much he's frowning. And I'm going to draw that eye smack bang in the middle of this, um, this the pupil smack bang in the middle of the eye. Just like that. So it ends up as kind of like a U sat inside of the eye and it, get it as central as you can because if it's just a little bit to the left or the right it's not going to look like he's looking directly at us. You have to get that right in the middle. And because I've hidden a bit of it, if I just draw a dotted line to demonstrate, that's part of the eye that we can't see because the eye's been brought down, uh, the brow's been brought down over the eye there. So there you go, that's a quick way how to draw an eye, uh, a pupil facing directly towards us. And it's good here if you just kind of round this off with a small shape there for the cheek and just kind of follow that guideline, thicken it out, make it actually look like the edge of the eye. So that's the hard part done. The face is probably the hard part other than maybe the shoes, um, but we'll get to those in just a moment. But for now, we can start blocking out the shape of our character. So right now, we've just kind of got stick limbs and that's not really what we want. So you can add a bit of thickness to these. Don't go too thick, but certainly don't go too thin or he'll, he'll look a bit kind of scary. So we want to add a bit of thickness to all these limbs just for now. And feel free to give them a little bit of curve so they look more cartoony and a bit bit more lively. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just drawing either side of my initial guidelines just to kind of etch out the body shape of our character here. If you go a bit too wide somewhere, just grab your eraser and bring it in just a little bit more than you had. Now we can get the belly done really, really quickly. We can just add this big kind of a beige circle to the front there. And that's pretty much done unless you want to add a little bit of curvature here to either side of the body make it just look a little bit more organic and uh, now we'll jump into the shoes and we'll tackle the hands last I have done a tutorial on how to draw hands I will link that later when we actually tackle the hands but for now we're gonna jump right into uh, drawing these shoes so right from here right where we finished drawing we've got a space between the line that we drew for the bottom of the ankle and where we drew for the top of the ankle so to do this we're gonna end each leg in a curve that looks like it's just kind of 
going right across that bottom of the leg like it's going into something, because it is. And now we're going to draw a curve here and a curve swooping underneath for that bottom line for the ankle. And then this one around there like that. Okay, so we end up with it kind of looking like it's sitting in the middle of uh, two donuts kind of stacked on each other without this middle line. And that's basically the sock of the shoe. And we just have to do that twice. So again, we just draw the C shape here, a big shape that dips down right over the very, very top of the shoe and another small backward C on this side. And again, we end up with two very thick white socks for his feet to sit inside. So now we can start building on the shape we drew at the start to master those shoes and get them looking right. So just sticking out the guideline that you drew for now, just make it look nice and bold and final and go past that guideline and bring it up to the back of that sock to draw the heel. And again, this one, we just kind of kind of reinforce this line, make it look a little bit more final, a bit bolder, and make sure you wrap it back up towards the bottom of that shoe. Now, I think a great place to start is with the soles and then actually work up because of the way the white stripe works. So we're just going to kind of follow the shape again, just follow along the bottom like this towards the heel. And again, on this side, start there, bring it up over the front like that, and then wrap it around, give it a nice bit of a curve as it goes around and meets that line there. And then there is a bit of a sole to these shoes, so there isn't just this white kind of stripe. We've got to add a bit of a heel here as well, just a little bit. Um, we actually can't see it on this shoe, so we only have to worry about adding that to this shoe. Just a small little bit of heel pad there. And then finally, we can add that white stripe. So all that is, give it a bit of a curve, make that shoe look like it's actually 3D. Don't draw like a, a straight line like that. That's not going to look right. You want to give it a bit of a curve, make it look like it's really swooping over that shoe like that. Try and give it a nice natural look and it'll go a long way towards improving your entire drawing. One thing looking amiss uh, and it can really kind of throw the whole thing off. So do your best to get that right. Speaking of getting things right, I'm just going to bring this line in a little bit here. I think I drew the arm a little bit too thick there. And now for the hands. We'll start with this hand because I think this one's a little bit easier. But we're going to start by doing basically the same thing as we did for the ankles. We're going to draw that cuff for the gloves because it's basically the same material as a sock, so why not? So again, we're just drawing that double donut technique there. And now for this hand, I want this hand to be a fist, because I want him to look like he means business. So to do that, keep this block in mind here, keep that in mind, because we're going to use that as a guide for how big the hand is going to be, and it'll stop us from drawing the hand too big or too small. So I'm going to start by drawing a thumb that kind of juts out a bit here and goes back into our guideline about halfway down that square. Then I'm going to head this off with a small curve like that, so it ends up looking like a J on its side. And now for the near finger, we're going to come out from here and curve it into a knuckle shape like that. And then all you have to do is add the rest of the knuckles. So he's got four fingers, so we'll add four knuckles and we'll bring them back up to the sock. I do usually only draw three uh, fingers on cartoons, but I'm going for four this time just to show you guys the variation of drawing cartoons and, and designing them because uh, you can always draw three fingers if you want, but get used to drawing four fingers as well because they take a different amount of space to draw. So now for this hand. This hand is a bit peskier, but we're going to do it together. We'll start with the easy bit. We'll draw that double sock technique again. This is really, really common in cartoons, so this is definitely worth knowing and practicing. You just want to kind of draw that double double donut, like that kind of very, very Mickey Mouse sort of thing. Lots of old school cartoons have exactly this kind of thing going on with gloves and socks, etc. And now for this hand. So this block, again, we want to keep this block in mind because it's going to prevent us from drawing the hand too big or too small. We want to make sure we get that size right. And now for the thumb, we'll draw the thumb first. So the thumb starts right there. We're going to draw a line that curves up over our guideline like this and then comes in, swoops right in to our guideline like this and finishes on it like that. We end up with this. It's a little bit thicker at the end. Can you see this? So it goes a bit thin where, there where it bends but it's quite thick at the end. That's a very cartoony thing. So if you can get that look down, it's going to look pretty fantastic already. And then we're going to add one finger pointing out. So he's doing this characteristic finger waving thing. So let's add a finger really, really sticking out like this, make it a little bit thicker at the end. Cause again, that's a very, really typical cartoon thing, having fingers thicker at the end than they are where they start. And if you can get this finger right, that acts as a guide for drawing the rest of the fingers because we're not going to have the other fingers sticking out like this, like he's counting to four. We're not going to do that. We're going to have the other fingers folded in and they need to sit underneath this thumb. So drawing that thumb first was important because that helps us to plan where these fingers are going. So all we're adding is a few small lumps like that. And then we can finish this off by drawing a small curve for the palm. 
If you feel like it's missing something, you can add a small line there that doesn't quite reach the bottom, and that really improves the fact that it actually looks like, you know, a hand. So our sketch needs one more thing, and you might have already guessed what it is. He is missing a small spike on his back. So we're just going to go underneath that arm there, okay, and head it off like that, a bit like a shark's fin. Okay, and feel free to join up any, any lines and correct the anatomy any way you want. I'm going to add a small neck there, just with a small curve, not make it too thick or thin. And there we go, I'd say our sketch of a movie Sonic at this point is done. So I'm going to go over this, go over the lines and finalise them. You might want to do the same with your Sharpie, don't go over any of those guidelines like these. We don't need those anymore, they've served their purpose, so we can toss those away like yesterday's trash. But everything else is good, so go over your lines and finalise them and add a bit of colour if you want. I'm going to do the same, so I'm going to see you in just a moment. Unlike Sonic himself, you really can take your time and go slow on this one to ensure that you get it right. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. You should go and check out the film if you haven't already, it's a real treat. And if you've got this far, thank you for watching the video all the way through. Hit the subscribe button if you want to continue to learn to draw the fast and easy way. Until next time.